Ray, come here. Come. Come on. This is Ray. She's our new kitty. You might hear her in the background meowing from time to time, but I'm sure you won't mind because she's so cute. Hello friends. Summer has arrived in all of its sun-soaked glory, inviting us to bask in its warmth and embrace the season's endless adventures. As I've stated in previous videos, I struggle to enjoy the summer. However, it seems this year I've been enjoying every single moment. Lately, I've been indulging in movies like The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and Under the Tuscan Sun. Each morning, I like to make my breakfast and go out to my patio and work on a little painting before the weather gets way too hot, relishing the scent of the blooming daylilies I have growing in my garden. I've also been enjoying fantasy books about adventures and love stories that take place during this season, and that's been very delightful. I think I'm slowly learning that summer can be truly magical. So today I wanna to share with you my summer welcoming kit, full of movies, TV shows, books, games, and activities that you can do, especially if you are not a summer lover like myself. So let's kick it off with the books. So a few of these books have to do with the genre of fantasy. I've been trying to read fantasy a lot more because I feel like it's growing in popularity, but there are a lot of fantasy books from the past that aren't really talked about. So let's get into those. First, we have Elodie's Library of Second Chances by Rebecca Raisin. This book follows Elodie, a librarian who inherits a quaint bookshop. Delving into its secrets and vast collection, she finds books that offer readers a chance to rewrite their stories. Perfect for summer reading, this heartwarming novel transport you to a cozy world of books, adventure, and romance, evoking hope and inspiration amidst a small town. Next we have Summers at Castle Auburn by Sharon Shin. Summers at Castle Auburn by Sharon Shin is a fairy tale about a girl named Coriel Halsing. Coriel is the illegitimate daughter of a nobleman, and when he dies, his brother honors the Lord's dying wish to find and bring Cori to Castle Auburn. This is when a pattern is set for her life. She begins spending summer with her uncle and half-sister Alessandra in the castle, learning the importance of being a lady. And the rest of the year she spends with her grandmother, learning to be an herbalist. Over time, she becomes fully acquainted with her two worlds, but less and less a true member to either. As she ages, she comes to discover a terrible injustice being committed by those she thought she knew. And at the castle where she once lived in peace, she now walks in fear for her life. This book is filled with wonderful characters, mythical creatures, and wonderful places. There's a touch of romance. It offers a captivating escape to a world of knights, nobility, and enchanting summers. It'll transport you to a lush and vibrant setting, making it an ideal companion for lazy afternoons or vacations. Moving on, we have The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi is a high seas pirate adventure set in the 12th century and it follows Amina Al-Sarafi, a middle-aged retired pirate who lives a quiet life with her daughter, when one day a wealthy woman approaches her to find her lost granddaughter. Amina then brings together her old crew to go on this one last adventure to find the granddaughter. Throughout their journey, we get to know the crew, learn their old tensions within the group that have to be dealt with, and there's a strong family vibe. It's filled with magic. The author's vivid descriptions of the sea in this book will evoke a strong desire to personally experience its captivating beauty. Given its swashbuckling themes, this pirate adventure is an ideal choice for your summer reading list. And then we have The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany. The King of Elfland's Daughter is a classic fantasy novel that tells the story of a kingdom called Earl and its interactions with the realm of Elfland. The plot revolves around the marriage of a mortal man, Alveric, to Lirazel, the daughter of the king of Elfland. Lirazel struggles to adapt to mortal life, while Alveric faces challenges in Elfland as he tries to win her hand. This novel explores themes of love, duty, and the clash between the mortal and magical realms. It is known for its lyrical prose and imaginative world building, creating a rich tapestry of fantastical landscapes and characters. They say that this book had a lot of influences on stories by J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, and you can really tell that. It's a very fun classical novel. If you are a die-hard fantasy reader, then I highly suggest that you read this. And then last, we have Dandelion Wine by Ray Brown. 
Bradbury. Dandelion Wine is a nostalgic novel set in 1928 in Greentown, Illinois, following 12-year-old Douglas Spaulding and his experiences of summer. Inspired by Bradbury's own memories, it captures the essence of childhood, memory, and the fleeting beauty of a youth through interconnected stories that explore life's joys and mysteries, all centered around the symbolism of dandelion wine as a celebration of summertime and the magic found in everyday moments. It's a timeless read that transports readers to a simpler era and inspires reflection on the richness of life. This book had me crying through about a third of it. It has tragic moments and it is beautifully written. The descriptions of the season in this book had me really wondering why I have such a disdain for the season because it really does capture those truly magical moments that you only experience during the summertime. And captured through Bradbury's writing, it makes it all the more beautiful. If you are a fan of Ray Bradbury and you're looking for something that's a little tragic yet a little nostalgic, I highly suggest that you read this if you haven't, especially during the summer season. Okay, that's all the books that I have for you. Let's move on to movies. Okay, so the first movie I have for you on my list is actually a documentary. It deals with a road trip across America and nomadic life, and that is Expedition Happiness. Expedition Happiness documents the journey of filmmaker Felix Stark, his girlfriend Salima, and their dog Rudy as they traverse North America in a converted school bus. Felix, a dedicated documentarian, captures their experiences through his lens while Salima, a musician, finds creative inspiration for an album that becomes the film's soundtrack. Their quest for happiness unfolds amidst breathtaking landscapes, diverse cultures, and the transformative experiences of nomadic life. The documentary vividly portrays their adventures, the trials of minimalist living, and the profound beauty of embracing unconventional lifestyles, offering an intimate narrative of personal growth and a profound connection to the world around them. This film is ideal for the summer because, like I said, it offers a breathtaking view of a road trip across North America. It inspires adventure, it inspires wanderlust, and when I tell you that the soundtrack to this is really good, I immediately added it to my Spotify when I listened to the entire thing. It is perfect for when you're driving through the mountains or the forest. It really captures that magical feeling that you get when you're in nature, and it is so good. I highly recommend that you watch it. The next movie I have on my list is The Kings of Summer. The Kings of Summer is very very reminiscent of growing up as a teenager, especially for young boys. Obviously, I don't know what that's like, but I do have a brother and my husband tells me a lot of his past. So hopefully this will resonate with many of you. Even if you're not a boy, you can understand what it was like to be a teenager. The Kings of Summer is a movie that follows three teenage friends, Joe, Patrick, and Biagio, who are tired of living with their overbearing parents that then decide to build their own house in the woods and live off of the land for the summer, all to experience true freedom and independence. This film blends humor with heartfelt moments as the boys navigate realities of their new lifestyle, from foraging for food to dealing with unexpected challenges. Throughout their adventure, the friends confront personal issues, deepen their bonds, and experience the highs and lows of teenage life. The film captures the essence of youthful rebellion and the quest for self-discovery, all set against the backdrop of a beautiful, sun-drenched summer. It has a great cast that consists of Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally, and it is just a wonderful film with witty dialogue and relatable characters that gives off a nostalgic look at what it's like growing up. This film is truly beautiful. The cinematography is very inspiring. It'll give you wanderlust. It'll make you want to pack up with your friends and go camping. It is such a wonderful film. I highly recommend that you watch it. The next movie on my list is Midnight in Paris, starring Owen Wilson and Rachel McAdams. Midnight in Paris is a very charming romantic comedy about a writer named Gil who's visiting Paris with his fiancée, Inez. Gil is nostalgic for the past and dreams of living in the 1920s, when one night, as he's wandering the streets of Paris alone, a magical car whisks him away to the 1920s, where he meets legendary artists like Hemingway, Picasso, and Fitzgerald, and many more. Each night, Gil escapes to this enchanting era, finding inspiration and questioning his present day life. It's a lighthearted and romantic film, filled with charming moments that call to mind the warmth of summer evenings. Plus, the whimsical journey through time in the gorgeous cityscapes offer a refreshing and inspiring break from the everyday, making it an ideal summer watch. The next movie I have on my list is one of my favorites. It is so fun. It's about the Beatles, and that is called Yesterday. In Yesterday, we have our main character, Jack Malik, a struggling musician who wakes up after a freak accident to find he's the only person who remembers the Beatles. 
Realizing the opportunity, he starts performing their iconic songs and quickly becomes a global star. As Jack's fame skyrockets, he faces challenges in keeping the secret, staying true to himself, and figuring out what he really wants in life. With a fantastic Beatles soundtrack, charming performances by Hymish Patel and Lily James, a unique love story, Yesterday is a feel-good movie that is perfect for a cozy night in and is a delightful tribute to the Beatles and the power of music. Okay, for this last film, I saved it for last because it is one of my all-time favorite movies, and it's called Elizabeth Town. Elizabeth Town stars Orlando Bloom and Kirsten Dunst. This film revolves around Drew Baylor, who takes an unplanned road trip to Elizabeth Town, Kentucky, after facing a career setback and a personal loss. The road trip aspect of Elizabeth Town is central to the story, as Drew navigates through unexpected encounters, scenic landscapes, and moments of self-reflection along the way. It's not just about the physical journey, but also about the emotional and personal growth Drew experiences through his travels. This film captures the essence of a summer adventure, where every mile brings new discoveries and connections that shape Drew's perspective on life. This movie, without fail, makes me cry happy tears every single time that I watch it. You aren't just watching this film, you are experiencing these things that Drew experiences while he's on this road trip. Every single time I watch this, I feel like I'm also gaining a new perspective on life, which gives me a very warm and cozy feeling on the inside, and it assures me that everything's gonna work out in the end when I'm stressed or feeling anxiety about something. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you're a music lover like myself, the soundtrack in this movie is phenomenal. I remember when I was a teenager when this movie came out and I made a mix CD. I put it in my old Ford Escape. I listened to it so much that it got stuck in my car and I couldn't get it out. Ugh, this movie is just so good. If you have not seen this movie, go watch it right now. Like, stop what you're doing. I don't care if it's important. This movie is more important in my eyes. I'm so passionate about it. Go watch it right now. You will not regret it. Okay, so now that we are done with movies, let's move on to TV shows. The first TV show I have for you is Palm Royale on Apple TV, starring Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig stars as Maxine Simmons in this show set in 1969 Palm Beach, Florida. Maxine is determined to break into high society by joining the exclusive Palm Royale Country Club. This show dives into the flashy world of the rich and powerful, with Maxine's journey from outsider to insider, making for an exciting underdog story. Along the way, she uncovers juicy secrets while keeping her own hidden, all while trying to impress at a charity auction. Palm Royale explores themes of ambition, wealth, and the links people go to to achieve their dreams. The setting has perfect summertime vibes as it's set in Florida, and the design of the costumes and sets also make it great to watch for a summertime show. When I first started watching the show, I was very confused by whether it was a comedy or a drama, but it is very much both. Kristen Wiig is still completely hilarious in this. There's definitely a heavier emphasis on comedy, but it's got some drama mixed in. Like I said, Kristen Wiig, as always, steals the show with her witty comedy, and it is such a fun watch. It is on Apple TV Plus, and I highly recommend that you watch it this summer. Next, we have a very captivating story that is inspired by Fleetwood Mac, highly inspired by Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham and their relationship, and that is Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six is a show adapted from a book of the same name. It follows the rise and fall of a fictional rock band inspired by and loosely based on Fleetwood Mac in the 1970s exploring their hectic journey to fame and the personal dynamics that shape their music. What makes it an ideal watch for the summer is its vibrant color grading and immersive portrayal of music, love, and juicy drama. Set in California, it has a 70s vibe of the West Coast scene, taking you back to that groovy era. Whether you're lounging by the pool or relaxing at home, you'll be drawn in by its captivating soundtrack and compelling characters you can't help but root for. This is also one of those series that's going to jerk tears right out of your eyes, and I can't tell you why because it's so spoiler heavy, but just know that it's a good thing. It's a good thing that you cry at this show because the story is just, it is just chef's kiss. It is so good. Go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. So let's dive into the next one. 
that is The Summer I Turned Pretty on Amazon Prime. The Summer I Turned Pretty is based on a young adult book trilogy by Jenny Han. It follows a girl named Isabel as she navigates summers at a very special beach house with her family and her longtime friends, the Fisher Brothers. Its main theme explores what it feels like to fall in love for the very first time. Whether you're reminiscing about your own summers or reflecting on life changes, this series captures those emotional moments we all experience. It perfectly encapsulates that feeling of the magic of summer while growing up as a teenager, and while it is a show heavily centered on teenage experiences, it resonated with me so I believe it will resonate with anyone that isn't a young adult. Also, if you're a Swifty, you're going to love this because so much of her music plays throughout the entire series. Let's switch gears here a little bit. If you are looking for a sizzling drama that is going to keep you on the edge of your seat this summer, then you should watch House of the Dragon. If you're at all plugged into social media, chances are you've already heard about the series, but just in case you aren't, let me bring you up to speed. House of the Dragon serves as the prequel to Game of Thrones, set 273 years before the original show. It delves deep into the captivating history of House Targaryen, showcasing epic battles, intricate political intrigue, and of course, dragons. This series vividly portrays the rise of the Targaryen dynasty to power in the tumultuous civil war known as the Dance of the Dragons. It's packed with fantasy, gripping drama, and breathtaking storytelling. Just a heads up though, if you are at all sensitive to themes of incest, graphic violence, or sexually explicit content, then this is not a show for you. However, if you are an open-minded individual, I highly suggest that you watch this. The storytelling is unmatched. Like I said, the series will keep you on the edge of your seat. It'll have you questioning whose side you're on, and it is so captivating. Last on my list that I have for you for TV shows is a docu-series, and it's called Escape to the Chateau. Escape to the Chateau is a delightful reality series that's so wonderfully cozy. It follows Dick and Angel Strawbridge, a couple who embark on a charming adventure to fix up a historical chateau in France. It's a blend of DIY renovation, beautiful French scenery, and the couple's life raising their children while also trying to run a business. You get to see them tackle all sorts of challenges and make this beautiful chateau, a place of business where they open up rooms to stay in, as well as turn the property into a venue for weddings and other events. If you're at all inspired by reality shows where they renovate spaces, you will love this show. It's totally charming. And what's really cool about it is that Angel's mind works in a way creatively that is so unique. It's so incredibly inspiring. She takes what is authentic to the chateau and modernizes it while also staying true to the history of the chateau itself. At the end of every episode, I'm just like, why didn't I think of that? That is such a good idea. I'm not entirely sure where you can watch this the last time. I watched it, it was on Peacock, and not all episodes were available, but I can assure you the ones that are available are really good, so go give it a watch. All right, now that we're done with TV shows, I have to show it to you because like I said, I am passionate about video games. There are video games out there for everyone. I think that these go really well with the summer, so let's move on to those. Okay, so the first game that I have for you is a very beautiful puzzler, and it is called Botany Manor. Set in 1890, players take on the role of Arabella Green, a retired botanist and recipient of Somerset Manor who is researching plants in preparation of publishing a book about the world's forgotten flora. In this game, you get to explore a scenic manor, find seeds of some very unusual plants, and discover how to make them flower and grow. Next, we have Abzu. After waking up floating on the ocean surface, you play as a diver. The diver begins exploring the surrounding underwater environment filled with plant and animal life and uncovering ancient technology and submerged ruins. Next, we have Coral Island. Coral Island is an adorable farming simulator that takes place on a tropical island. There are plenty of other activities for the player to get involved in other than just farming. There's decorating, fishing, foraging, cooking, crafting, exploring, and so much more. Next, we have A Short Hike. This is a charming and relaxing adventure game where you play as Claire, a bird exploring Hawk Peak Island. You enjoy leisurely exploration, engage in mini games, and soar through pixelated landscapes, all while soaking in its cozy atmosphere and soothing soundtrack. And then lastly, we have Firewatch. This is a first person adventure game set in the 1980s in Wyoming, where players control Henry, a fire lookout investigating mysterious events after his tower is vandalized. Communicating solely via walkie talkie with supervisor Delilah, players explore, make choices that affect their relationship and collect items to uncover the truth. 
And those are all the games I have for you. They are all very fun. They are perfect for summer. I think Botany Manor has to be my favorite because it's very reminiscent of Downton Abbey. You do get to explore this manor as this elderly woman trying to publish a book. And Firewatch is also really good because the story is so captivating. But let's move on to activities. Okay, so the first activity I have on my list for you is to make a bucket list. Yes, I know I go on and on about bucket lists, but they really do make the seasons go by easier. You, you have something to look forward to, especially if there are things that you didn't get to do last year, you can write them down and do them this year or the next year or the next year. And what I really like to do is put the list on my phone first. That way I don't have to worry about being creative. I can just rapid fire, write them all down. And then once I have my list on my phone, I like to go into my iPad or maybe grab some markers and a piece of paper and write them down. Maybe put an illustration to inspire the season. That's what I did this year. I got on my iPad and I was very much inspired by like Victorian era summertime, found a few illustrations that I liked and then I go to print it out and I put it on my fridge. That way anytime I go to make a summer recipe like a summer salad or something, I'm reminded and inspiring my inner child to maybe make plans to do that thing for the summer. Next activity I have for you is something that I mentioned in one of my videos last summer and that is to go stargazing. This is something that you can do on a summer night to make your summertime truly magical. I believe that stargazing helps us to slow down and it is such a very unique way to connect to nature. It shows us that we should slow down and appreciate the beauty of the universe. And I love the sense of wonder that you get while stargazing, whether you're with your friends or your significant other or family, pointing up at the constellations and wondering what it's all for and why we are all here. It is just so much fun to have those deep connected conversations conversations with the people around you about the big vast universe that we are living in. What I really like to do is blow up an air mattress, grab some quilts and some pillows, go out to my patio if the skies permit. If not, Brian and I will pack up all of our belongings and we'll, we'll go out to the country and we'll find a spot where we can stargaze. When I was little, this was by far one of my most favorite things to do when we would visit the mountains of Colorado. I have some of the most profound memories deep within me about stargazing with all of my cousins. There would be probably 30 of us that would go out and look up at the stars. It's just so magical to do this, especially during the summertime because the weather permits it. So I highly suggest that you do this. Pack up some stuff if you live in a city, go out with your significant other, go out with your best friend and make those memories because that's truly what matters in this life, to make memories with the people that you love. Just take it all in, take in that breathtaking view. You won't regret it. Next activity, of course, is a creative one. You know, we have the autumn where you carve pumpkins. We have Christmas where you can make cookies or ornaments. And then we have spring where you can make wreaths or what have you. But summertime, you can do those things. Just make it more seasonal. And it's something that you can do to escape the heat. My suggestion for this would be to paint seashells. Or what I did this year is grab some terracotta pots. Since I don't live near a beach, I can't just go down to the beach and get some seashells. I got some terracotta pots and I painted them. I put some flowery patterns on them and I put them outside and put some plants in them and it was so much fun it took me no time at all but it was a great way to escape the heat and I really enjoyed this so you can do this with your friends your family with your little ones it is such a fun way to enjoy the summer creatively not that any of you needed to be reminded of this pastime but also take precautionary measures when doing this is to build a bonfire roast some marshmallows and make s'mores additionally bring a book of ghost stories around that bonfire with your loved ones and gear up for autumn. There is nothing quite like gathering around a crackling fire, roasting those marshmallows and enjoying those ooey gooey chocolatey treats. It's a perfect way to embrace your inner child and to bond with your loved ones. Like I said, bring a ghost story or a book of ghost stories, read it aloud around that campfire while everyone is enjoying their treats and enjoying the warmth of that fire during the evenings and gear up for the autumn. As you know, I am an autumn enthusiast. I love the autumn. I think that once summer hits that's all I can think about so it's kind of like a good way to bring in the autumn into summertime you can share laughs you can get spooked under a starry night sky and then just enjoy time together like I said it sets up that mood perfectly for autumn get a little spooked enjoy that chocolatey treat be safe, but definitely do this. You don't need to be reminded of it, but just in case you do, it's on this list. Next, I highly recommend that you experiment with making homemade ice cream. 
There are so many options when it comes to flavors. You can add berries, you can add candy, you can go wild and add botanical flavors like lavender or elderberry. And what's really great about it is that there are so many recipes out there for people that are lactose intolerant or vegan. And you don't need some fancy machine to churn it for you. There are so many recipes out there that are no churn. I made a delicious no churn mascarpone cheese ice cream the other day and I was in heaven. It was so delicious. There are so many ways that you can experiment and it is such a delicious treat that can cool you down this summer. Now, if ice cream sounds like too much effort, consider hosting a lemonade flight tasting with your friends. It's a fantastic way to unleash your creativity using different flavors to make lemonade taste not just like lemonade. I made this delicious blueberry lemonade the other day that was to die for. My husband and I drank it right up. It was so much fun. It is such a perfect way to enjoy the summer and escape the heat. Now I could go on and on about activities that you could do this summer. I could give you more books and movie recommendations, but I think I'm gonna stop here. Thank you so much for tuning into this welcoming kit video. I had so much fun making it like I always do. I truly appreciate each and every single one of you that watch these videos. You have no idea how much it means to me. Whether you are making a delicious ice cream, crafting those lemonades, or enjoying a night under the night sky, I hope that these ideas bring an extra sparkle to your sunny summer days. Stay cool, stay inspired, and have a wonderful summer. Bye everyone.